Um, so, you know, originally I was going to use the actual soundtrack yeah. to, uh, to, um, to the original Halloween. And so I tempted it in with Carl Casey's music here. And it actually timed out well, coincidentally. I didn't plan for it to time out. It just kind of did. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, okay, well, we're in. I remember when you sent me, you sent me two correct two yes. of these and you're like which one do you sound better i think it had the original theme song right and it had this one yep. and i was like i like this one better and you're like i don't know because this is kind of the music for the for the second hollywood you know? oh yeah that's right i do remember saying and i still stand by that comment that i do think it has more of the synthy sound of the second movie but now it's like i've seen this opening so many fucking times that i just Same. can't picture it i can't picture it with with the John Carpenter, but I wanted to show you this while I had you. So this shot's actually about 10 years old, and this this is the original shot right here. So you can see it was not only stabilized, but it had green screen uh, work done. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the exact same shot. I shot that in Louisiana in wow. probably 2013. Wow. So it, it really did kind of stand the test of time. And this is why I think it is. It's because the... It was a really a shitty autofocus camera, but I think since the pumpkin is the only thing in the shot, it got it to folk to get a really sharp yeah. um, image of just that. So I think that's why. That, that's wild that you did that that long. Because I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna redo it for the movie, and then I said, well, if it's not broke, you know, don't don't fix it. I was so. gonna ask you how you did that because it, cause it looks very similar to the opening from all the Halloweens before, and so I was like, did you? But some somehow I knew that you did it yourself. I think I asked you, and you're like, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I, um, it was, I really just did it just to do like my mock opening of a, I, it wasn't for the purposes of doing it for a, a documentary years later, so it just kind of, it kind of just worked out well. It's kind of like Slumdog Millionaire where like you have this video clip and you're like, hey, I can use it. And it was like, I, when I shot this originally, it wasn't anything to do with, uh, with making it into a documentary. So you just did it for fun? Just, exactly. You just watched on Halloween? Well, I, like, mean, I mean, you can make the argument I did this documentary for fun. Now, I wanted to ask you about this title. Did you ever notice that I made the title look like a knife? Once you see the white part, that looks like a, like a knife sitting down. Have you ever picked up on that? No. Well, that's why I did that. <laughs> I, have, I have to watch it back again. Yeah. You're like, what? You're like, you know. Uh, but yeah, that was, that, was, that was the genesis of that. Um, so we actually went to South Pasadena, I think, two or three weeks before yep. um, Halloween. And just to location scout, just because I didn't want it to be the day that we went was the first time we were there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, I gotta tell you, I, I like these scenes between me and you, but they're hard for me to watch. Not because I think they're bad, but because I think they were rushed because we had so many other things to get that day. And especially the hedge scene. And I think that's why I ultimately cut out the hedge scene uh -huh. is because I, and I've seen the raw footage where we're trying to film it and people just keep coming up to us. And I knew that that was gonna happen. Right. But I, I do feel like it did kind of affect the, the finished result. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did this. We did this take the most out of the everything most, else. Right. This and is the first thing we shot, it's, it's, and it right. was on right a busy street. The trains right there. Pedestrians right. coming up and uh, uh, walking by or talking to us as we were trying to film this. I mean, it was a nightmare. So ultimately, what I had to do, I had two takes of us going from beginning to end without something bad <laughs> happening in between that time. So what I ultimately did was I took about five different takes of the audio and then just blended it. And so, really? so that's why when I watch it, it has nothing to do with our performances, but the audio is looped. And so it makes me self-conscious that like a technical person watching it would oh. be like, oh, what's, what's this? I actually added street noise to make the looping less obvious. Oh, really? Okay. So the, um, the comment I just made about the, uh, does it look like I'm joking and I have that ridiculous mask on? I always refer to that as my $27 joke because I bought that mask well, actually, it didn't even cost me $27. I paid $27 for it, told the joke, left the tag on when we shot it. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, the tag was still it, on yeah. it. And then the next day, I returned it. So, yeah, the $27 joke. I don't know why I talk about that. But, um, and, you know, this is a prime example of giving the fans ultimately what they want, um, which is, you know, seeing Michael walk around town um, with the, you know, the steady cam looking that, shots. That was so fun. Um, so my <laughs> the questions I had prepared, and I'm such a smart ass for writing it this way, but it is fun. Uh, it was a two part question. The first question is, did any fans rub you the wrong way whenever we were filming that day? No. 
it, surprisingly not. I thought a black Michael Myers would have some <laughs> some type of I think negative people reaction. Embraced, I think people exactly. really dug it. Exactly. Yeah. I think I remember there's one person who actually only commented commented. There was one person who commented on uh, my skin color, and it was like a it was like a jokey type right. thing. And I think yeah. it was a lady. Yes. And that was the only one. Right. That was it. Yeah. The only people that gave a pro- gave us problems, and you'll see later is uh well, you won't see later, but you know around the head scene the right right the, oh the Karen yeah well, yeah. well that's in the, the the little making of thing yeah obviously I wanted to keep that out of the original exactly um or the the, the finished cut but you know that being said you know it was a very overwhelmingly positive experience um, yeah what what Dave is referring to is when we were filming in this neighborhood there was a lady across the street who yeah. was really like up our ass about what we were doing <laughs> and in her defense you know looking through the footage we did have a big ass light out that we didn't even u- use at that moment which is kind of funny and I think we had another piece of equipment out so it was really kind of ostentatious what what I, what I was doing so I can kind of see why she had that um that that apprehension but mm-hmm. you know and, and ultimately she is kind of right because it is her neighborhood but right. you know you can't live in south pasadena and not be aware of the fact that around halloween time that it gets inundated with fans yeah um so justin sinif here i actually did an episode of lone star with him where we were in background um, whenever he came came up on us on the hedge i was like God, this guy looks so familiar and the more I talked to him, because I remember he had a stutter. I, I remember during the interview, he stuttered a little bit. I said, that's got to be the same guy. Um, but yeah, really cool guy. Like, uh, really nice for doing the interview. Lone Star, the TV show mm-hmm. from like 10 years ago that got canceled immediately? Not Lone Star. Okay. It's, it's uh, with Liv Tyler. I forget which. It's it's called 911 Lone Star. Is that the show that's oh, on now? That, oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. Oh, I love Liv Tyler. And Jordan here, I felt bad for calling him a fan and an influencer because, you know, he's actually a pretty accomplished actor. Like, he's yeah. done some oh, yeah. big sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, you know, he does a lot of stand-up. And I said, you know, I can change it to actor. And he said, no, I think the influencer thing is funny. So he kind of he kind of embraced it. Oh, that's it. good. Um, let's see here. Um, so, okay, so the genesis of this film... Um, was that I went to Halloween or to South Pasadena on Halloween the first time in 2019 and I filmed a bunch of stuff with the same camera I ended up using went to go eat across the street from the Myers house to review the footage and all but like one or two shots were just fucked up they just I don't know why they just didn't play right I think ultimately the the, the SD card had had, um, malfunctioned okay so I got all this great footage I even got an interview with the woman who owned that this house right here um, which when when we asked her for an interview here for this she actually uh, said no which is fine anyway because I just wanted to have fans interviewed ultimately Uh, but all of that you know didn't come out and so it kind of drove me to say okay I'm going to do this again but I really want to do it right and try to make it into an actual movie right because people on YouTube have done this before where they go to South Pasadena on Halloween and film and but I think there's more to it there you know because it grows every year Mm -hmm. um and uh, you know maybe not this year but I definitely want to try to go every single year because there really is I mean there was kind of an energy there I mean I'm sure you picked up on that absolutely yeah there's so many Michaels out so many so many and even when we went three weeks before right there were people just cluttering around the house and stuff and you weren't even sure if like that was going to be <laughs> it was going to be that live but it was uh, yeah, and you're it was, like it was more than i expected exactly and you're like do you mind putting on the costume like right now <laughs> you know, well what's what's funny is okay so the featurette that i just required that i just edited a couple days ago there's a shot where i oh i just used the shot because i thought there was like one michael in, in it but now that i've seen the edit over and over i've noticed that there's actually about five or six it kind of relates back to what you're saying about there were so many people dressed up as michael myers that even so even in a shot where i thought there was only one michael myers there was actually like five or six <laughs> in the shot um so uh yeah um so David and I ultimately got connected because I, w- I was working on a true crime documentary and I, I hired David to be the reenactor of the actual person who's uh, standing trial right now um, for this homicide that's like 20 years old. And so that's like my big project that I'm working on right now. It's like a true crime feature and I'm writing a book about it. But the thing is the adjudication process is taking so long that I needed a new project to kind of do in between and that's kind of how like Michael came to be yeah. um, but um, that's how I you know got hooked up with uh, with David again and um, 
Good choice. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you said you said you, you said you said you were working on a documentary, and I wanted to comment. Still working on right. it. Yeah, I, right. <laughs> yeah. It is not over yet. We're still. Uh, I'm. I'm still. I don't even think there's. Think it's going to go to trial this year. I think I have quite a bit of time. Oh boy. Um, That's more work for me. More reenactments. So this is Tom. Tom was our very first interview. Great interview. Really set the momentum because yeah, every yeah. interview, every answer he gave was <laughs> was excellent. Um, same thing with Robert. T- uh, uh, Tom and Robert have both. Um, both gave really, really good articulate answers. Robert, Robert's a little bit nuts, man. He's really into Halloween. Like he'll watch the original Halloween two, three times a month. So it's it's Halloween for him year round. Wow. Uh, but more power to him. You know, he's forty years old. He looks about thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he no, he really has. He really embraces the holiday. Um, and you know, good for him. Embraces the shades too. So yeah, so this was Monica and Jared. Uh, they were the um, they were the first couple. So we interviewed two couples, and this was the first uh, married couple that um, that we had uh, interviewed. And uh, they yeah they were really cool. They I liked yeah. how they kind of bounced their answers off of each other. Yeah. Came all the way from Boston. Were they, they from? No, no, no. They actually no. They, they they live there now, but they were from. Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. They were from. Yeah, they were from Boston, and I think they had only uh, been living in LA for like maybe a year or two. Mm. And you can see, even during the interviews, there's people in you know going to the hedge because yep. we're actually a considerable distance away. I think because I think at this point we were trying to get away from that that <laughs> Karen yeah. across the street because we like left, came back, yep, and um, yeah. yeah. She was eyeballing us for a while, working yeah. on her line. I specifically you're the one on the camera i was just i looked like i blended in because i was in costume and well, stuff so you thought i was just a random fan but it was just you well it just annoyed there. me because i would i would answer her questions and all it did really was just open the floodgates <laughs> for more questions and it's like if i answer your questions fine like i gave i gave her totally reasonable answers but she just didn't she didn't say yeah. she wasn't having it <laughs> so this is our second couple that we had filmed and, and i picked them out of the crowd because they were dressed up um like loomis and Lori. And uh, they're really nice. Um, I gotta say, though, editing their responses was was a nightmare because they both gave uh, very, very long answers. So it was kind of hard to find a, a, a cutting point mm. um, in, uh, in in where in, in you know in where their answer kind of starts to veer off. But a great interview. Like they were really, really nice people. I still I still talk to them. You know, a lot of these people I still try to keep in pretty good contact with. Really? Um, yeah, well, because because they, they, they actually live here, so they were from Chicago. That's right. But, Chicago, but, yeah. but they live here now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these people I've been able to, uh, even though I, some people I had their last names, but some people I didn't. So mm-hmm. it's, been, it's been kind of a nightmare to, uh, to get, to, you know, track people down and get people to sign releases. It didn't even occur to me whenever we were filming it to get people to sign the release just because we were just way too busy, and I don't think, you know, my thing with signing a release is, I, I mean, if someone's hesitant, I can't be mad if, they, if they're hesitant to sign a release, because I would be just as hesitant, because uh, ultimately I don't know what this footage is going to be used for. Shoot. <laughs> Anything to put my face on anywhere, absolutely. Would I sign? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, somebody <laughs> like, like Jordan, for example, wouldn't be hard to get him to sign, because he's an actor, so he's right. like, you know, embrace everything, get in as much as you can. Yeah, it was really fun. You know, get your face seen. Uh, let's see what else I have. Uh, okay, so the second part of the question was, so the first part was, what was it like um, walking around dressed as Michael? I think you kind of answered that, huh? Yeah, I, I, I had a blast. Man, it was it was hot in the mask, but just the reactions of everybody and everybody just, you know, wanted to stop and take a picture with you. Yeah. Um, it, it sucks because I'm a talker, I'm a people person, but I, I'm in character the entire time, so I can't. They're yeah, asking questions that, and I want yeah, to talk, I want to respond. That. Right. But I like I can't, I can't talk to you. You know right. what I mean. Right. And I don't want to seem like an asshole. But <laughs> and, and there's there's something about being in the costume, in the in the suit, in the mask. There's this energy that you're like being. And I remember I was talking to Jordan after. Was like, man, you're intense. Like I feel it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not I'm not really trying to be. Yeah. Um. It's just kind of it kind of just takes over you. And right. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was the second part of the question. Again, I'm just a dick for writing out this, but this is funny. Was w- was it any different than walking around as a black man? <laughs> <I don't know why. laughs> it's funny. Extremely different. People okay. were happy to see you. Yeah. 
Good point. Good point. They actually didn't cross the street. So, so to, aside to from avoid you. Yeah. Okay. Well, good point. I mean, so was there? Uh, were there besides like children? Were there ever people who you who saw you who were maybe they were afraid of you or just uncomfortable with the fact that you were walking around dressed as Michael Myers? I remember there was a shot in the very beginning when I'm walking past this old this this not old lady but this elderly lady and she's not paying any attention to me and I think that's one of those signs where she's just like she obviously I'm there you see yeah. me in full costume but she her head's down a little bit yeah trying to pretend like she doesn't see me that's one of those see um, that's what I like about that shot though is it kind of looks like she's she's not afraid of you at all. And that's and and that's kind of one of the things I was playing on is that you know if you're watching the Halloween movies when he's walking around with the exception of a couple of movies when he's walking around uh, you know if anybody sees him they like run away yeah but it, it was kind of the opposite of that where people seem to kind of embracing the celebrity yeah. of Michael Myers yeah I, I don't remember any uneasiness from anybody because I, I can pick up on people's energies pretty well to know like okay don't mess with this person or anything like yeah. that. Um, yeah, because they're walking around with a knife. I mean, ultimately, the knife broke anyway, so you couldn't walk around <laughs> yeah. with it. Both the knife broke. So we bought, uh, that's my only thing about, I'm glad Trick or Treat Studios watched the documentary and I quoted them. But the only thing I do have to call them out on, the knives are only 15 bucks, so I'm not going to hate. But I ordered both knives. So there's the Halloween brand knife, which is the big thick one, and then there's the new one that they had when they came out with Halloween Kills. Kills is what we used for this documentary, but the big knife was what we used for the reenactment. <laughs> Both situations, the knife broke. It broke very easily. And ultimately, the thing about the knife, it's like a knife that you use to take a picture with, but it's not a prop knife that you can use in like a murder scene because it's going, it's going to break. In fact, and that's what happened both in both cases. In the yep. scenes where someone's getting murdered, the <laughs> knife broke. You, you can also attribute that to. I'm just. I mean, I'm not. I want to say I'm rough, but I, I, I forget my own strength sometimes, and maybe I'm holding it a little too hard. And maybe I'm stabbing Jordan a little too. too well, no, rough. I've I've seen the raw footage, and you and really it just kind of drops from your hand and just kind of cracks. Right. So I, I don't I don't think it was the way you're using it at all. I think uh, you know. And again, this is just giving fans what they want. Seeing someone get. I mean, that's yeah. why you watch a, a yeah. Michael Myers movie. He was so down Halloween. to do that. Oh yeah, he loved it. He was so happy. And then the look back. If you watch, yeah, it kind of looks back at you. I've always, yeah, I love this this right here because that was that that was that energy I was talking about. People just kind of like yeah, so they just crack. They just like they can't. It's too intense for them apparently. Well, some some stuff like this kind of made me nervous when we were filming. This especially okay. I wanted to bring this up. I was very nervous about filming this because <laughs> I didn't know uh, how this if this guy was like some kind of timid guy that didn't like being touched or or what was going on. And you guys are okay right here, but when you actually started strangling yeah. him, I was legit nervous. <laughs> because look at his initial reaction. I'm like, is he, I thought it was a woman at first. Look right, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, watch where you're putting your hands, man. We don't want to be me too'd. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, uh, ultimately he was kind of cool with it. So you know. yeah, I, like, I, like, I, I picked up on his energy. He was playing along. We, right. That was like that. You only got like a few, like 10 seconds of it there, but we were doing that for a while. For a while, yeah. Just staring at each other from across the street, tilting the head back, and we're just playing with one another. So you'll see that one of, uh, oh yeah, she's a cutie. Uh, you'll see one of, in the previous shot, one of Brian's cousins. We, we interviewed Brian, but I ultimately cut his interview from, from the, the now 26 minute doc. So it was originally 33 minutes, but I felt like some answers were kind of just a little too fatty. So I just wanted to cut it down. Um, and ultimately, I don't think people are too big a fan. I mean, so a lot of the um, fans who were in the doc that got interviewed wanted it to be like feature length. And I said, I could have made it feature length, but mm -hmm. I think it would have just dragged on. Right. Um, I really wanted it under 30 minutes. And in fact, there was a festival I was entering where that was a requirement. It had to be under 30 minutes. But ultimately, I would have done that anyway. Um, and this is one of my favorite shots, just because I think right when it gets to the point where it's like, well, it looks like somebody's, you know, doing it, you know, pouring the leaves onto the shot, and you see this wide shot of, you know, Michael Myers doing just that. <laughs> so, I, uh, when you posted the featurette and I posted it, I had one of my friends comment because it's not in the doc, but there's a there's a there's a point where there's a Michael Myers driving the car, and I'm doing the leaves on top of his right, car. Right, that's a great she shot. thought that was hilarious. Yeah, and see, and, and and ultimately that's why I cut the little making of thing was to take all that footage that I didn't use in the movie because at first I was pissed off. I was watching this footage. Kind of, I had a beer, so I was kind of half in the bag, and I was like, oh, God damn it, I should have used that in the doc. But ultimately, I think the shots that are used in the making of thing work for that purpose. Yeah, Everything absolutely. else, you know, like the shot of you in front of the train holding the pumpkin is a great fucking shot. 
but it wouldn't have looked right in a movie. Right. But God, that's such a great shot. <laughs> Man, that's such a good shot. The, fucking, the light, the whole, the title, shot right. right there. No, it's it's so good. And and you know, and that's the thing is, you know, ultimately there were like two hundred over two hundred shots, and you just you can't show all of them. Yeah. So you kind of just have to go with some of the best looking stuff. Because mm-hmm. I, I remember I I took so many pictures with so many fans, right, right. so many. And they weren't in the in the actual dot. No. And I understand why for timing reasons and stuff like that. Right. But I know you had an extra a whole lot of extra footage. I remember talking to you before you decided to make the feature at like there's right. a whole lot of shots. There's a whole lot. I know that you got. <laughs> there's ones where I even disappeared because there was just so many Michaels around. You didn't even mean right. to be right. anywhere. So the the closing scene that's coming up here in just a minute, David is actually in the shot, but he's in the background kind of just uh, taking a breather. Uh, because the guy came in, not only he was dressed as Michael Myers, but his kid was dressed as the younger version of Michael yeah, Myers. Yeah. So as far as Michael went, he was he was fairly he was covered. But what's cool, and this is another shot I put in the making of thing, is I liked when they were passing you. The guy who played Loomis kind of did like that, like he was signaling to you, like, you know, respect. But I love I love that shot of him just kind of doing that. But, oh, I must have missed that. I don't yeah, know yeah, it's that. in the it's in the making. Okay. Of thing. Actually, so the making of it, there's two different cuts. I found a flaw of it on the one I posted on Instagram. So I posted the finished one on YouTube, and actually that one has Jason Siegel in it. So it has the little Jason Siegel. What? Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but very briefly, you know what? I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay, because I, I the YouTube one is the one I posted. I downloaded it and it posted. That's the one I posted by, and I watched it. I didn't see it. Uh, oh, oh! Because I reposted it the next oh, okay. day. Yes, gotcha. I, was, yeah, I was trying to make sense of it. Oh, okay. You said Jason Siegel. They don't know what you're talking about. On the, on Halloween, on the day that we filmed this, we were walking back to the Myers house mm-hmm. uh, from across the street, um, and it was crowded. It was about five o'clock at night. It was, just, it was Halloween, so people were walking the street, trick or treating. He wanted to be seen. I I saw Jason Siegel was eating at a restaurant outside. He called, he called him Jason Sudeikis. <laughs> you no, you, no, no, you called him Jason Sudeikis. Oh no, you I did. Footage, you no. no, no, pull it up after this. Pull it up. Okay, you right, called him. I'll I was like, up. I knew who it was. I watched How, How I Met Your Mother, and I he was just sitting there eating his food. I I picked him out of the crowd, and I was well, just, one of us said Sudeikis, but yeah, it was Jason Siegel. I was flabbergasted, and. He acknowledged me. He was very nice. Um, he was eating, so I didn't ask for a picture, so I left him alone. 20 minutes later, I decided to <laughs> screw that. I'm like, oh, get a freaking picture with him. Thankfully, he was done eating, and he was he was nice enough to take a picture with me, and I posted it. It was it was it was awesome. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, Siegel knew. I mean, he's he was born in L.A. He's very L.A. savvy. He must know about all the people. Yeah. I mean, because that area of South Pasadena is busy anyway. Because it's a high-profile spot, there's a lot of uh, eateries there. Yep. Very trendy, but especially on Halloween. Yep. Um, I'm assuming he might live in Pasadena because he walked off. He didn't. He got up and walked. He was yeah, He just like, walked away. There goes I would, my you know what? I would love to live in South Pasadena. <laughs> truth be told, I, after, it was beautiful. I mean, it really does look like the Midwest. It, I see why John Carpenter picked that it's location. It's so beautiful there. Like the first time we went, it was kind of dark. Um, it was because we because we got there a little late. Yeah, yeah, but I remember like this is actually nice, and then we went again for Halloween. I'm yeah. like this. It was like, beautiful from the moment. Yeah, yeah and I'm like ever there. since then I've been saying, Yo, Pasadena, I might that might be the move. That be the next move. So ultimately, what I want to do with these film series, depending on if this movie you know gets into festivals and does well or whatever, I would you know obviously yeah I would I would love to make another one. Fingers crossed. Uh, I would love to make another one. But the idea I had recently was instead of calling it like Michael Two. I think it'd be kind of a neat idea just every year to make one, but just call it like Michael. Like don't, don't call it anything else. Uh, and I know that might confuse people as well, which one is which, but I think ultimately if it took us five or six times before we made a really, really good one, I wouldn't want it to be hindered by the fact that it was like the fifth or sixth one. So horror films have kind of a stigma for if they make a bunch of sequels, by the time you get to the fifth or sixth movie, no one's taking it seriously anymore. Okay. And so the, 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 the logic behind just calling every one the same movie, like the same title, would be to give each one its own chance of kind because they none of the movies would be connected like it wouldn't be the same people the only commonality would be kind of like be like Star Wars they all start off the same way South Pasadena Halloween Day um, and I think ultimately if it was ever uh, embraced by fans the way they'd be able to differentiate each movie was they would be they would refer to it by year so this one would be referred to as Halloween 2021. Yeah. Which would actually be my ultimate dream if people ultimately refer to these movies as Halloween and not like Michael. But I like like Michael. I really like the title like Michael. 
I, as soon as you told me the title, I was, I was, I was like, what? It that was like was... the time, first time uh, Ice Cube heard it in WA. He was like, yes, that's the name. That's what we're using. That, that was, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm down. Uh, my name is V uh, from Chicago. Okay, and all that talking, we've actually reached the end of the film. And um, I thought about doing, yeah, we're at the end. I thought about doing a closing credits. Uh, well, but there's never a lull in our conversations, David. I think we're very good about <laughs> keeping the conversations going. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought it'd be better instead of having closing credits, we just had each person kind of say who they were and where they were from. Yeah, and it wouldn't be that long of credits anyway. Well, I mean, well, no, you're right, and it, I think the credits, the the original credits, I think were two minutes because I, the thing I, I went against ultimately was showing people, and I did it for a couple of people. I showed people that weren't actually in the documentary, um, just for whatever reason, and I kind of rearranged these from the original cut. Um, but I love this kid at the end. He's uh, you know, dressed like like yeah, you know, little Michael. Yeah, it's great because it's just so candid. You know, because people really do forget that there's. A, I guess because cameras are everywhere now that people really do forget they're being recorded. And I, I just love it when he says like, "Mommy, can you fix the hair, please?" And they're just you know, it's just a very like. <laughs> well, he has that Michael Myers moment. two shot in both eyes. Right. Eyes. Yeah, he certainly does. Yeah. I have complaints about that. That, <laughs> that I'm not, movie. I'm not, yeah, I'm not crazy about that mask either. <laughs> yeah, it's so obviously different from the first well you know i wasn't crazy about the mask that, that you wore just because uh, again you know trick-or-treat studios i don't think for like an 80 dollars mask i mean i think i got it on amazon for 50 but if you went and got it at like a spirit halloween it was like 70 or 80 bucks and i think the hair was really patchy kind of yeah like on the white there's a big it looked like white michael spot kind of like, like was going through chemo a little bit <laughs> so. anyway that's the end of the movie david anything you want to say before uh, we wrap no up? thanks thanks for watching yeah um, thanks for watching we whoever, had fun whoever did watch if you have watched it in its entirety, uh, <laughs> just thank us you, repeatedly thank, thank you for doing that thank you for sitting through a 27 minute youtube video you're a very nice person